your name on it. Just put your name on it. That's all I say. Be a man or a woman. Put your name on it. Oh, I'd like to hear about it, potheads. How the fuck you gonna know how to be great if you don't study greatness? Look at the game change. Donuts. If you want a battle with either that you will say you're wrong. You know, you're not a bad looking man, Mr. Gals. But you are, Blanche. You are in that chair. There's something wrong with us. Something very, very wrong with us. Bobby Lee up in the house. Yeah, yeah. Time number two, Bobby Lee. My favorite. It's amazing. Uh, my favorite Korean. Thank you so much. No, I, I love. You have the best sentence that's well, ever been said on the More Stories podcast. <laughs> when you're talking about the special man that used to uh, fondle you as a kid and rape you as a kid in the. I would. In, I would the R word. I wouldn't use that word. Rape. Yeah. Uh, a it's sexually. A, it was assault? M. Molest? Yeah. All right. And the guy had a shed where they kept the lawnmowers at the school. No, it was this Zamboni, but keep going. No, you do it then. No, I want you to keep going. We the, greatest, it. the guy's shed was covered in candy, candy all over the place. It wasn't and made out of candy. It's not like, you know, had, a gingerbread house. Jesus criminy. Everything I it say. It was a wooden shack with candy inside it. Filled with candy. Not filled. They had these rafters above, you know what I mean, that he hit them in or whatever. And he would say, come on in, I'll give you candy? No, you would go, or whatever, like that. But it was implied <laughs> if you came in and got molested, well, you got candy? you know, it's, it was an assumption, I guess. But the thing right. is, is, I walked in, got some candy, and something happened. But then you said on this podcast, yeah. on More Stories, a while ago, you said, and every time I went back, and I went, whoa, why did you go back? And you said, that's how much I loved candy. <laughs> That's how much I love it. Anything. Greatest sentence I've ever heard. But it's like drug addiction, right? It's like you, you'll do anything for heroin or whatever, right? Yeah, I will. I know, me too. Right now. And I don't even shoot it or smoke it. I just, I, ho- I just have it in case the apocalypse <laughs> comes, and that's currency. Yeah. I'm hoarding it. I want to be the – when the apocalypse comes, the zombie apocalypse, I want to be there with you, buddy. You want to be in my foxhole? Yeah, because we're going to die together. All right, but you'd be great in a zombie apocalypse because you'd be a total point guard. You're just bananas enough. I could talk you into like going into the gas station. Fill like you could totally grab Gatorades and get back in time. Don't worry about it. You'd be like, <laughs> yeah. all right, I'm going. Like the Asian guy from Walking Dead. Is that what you're talking about? Sort of. Yeah, and then I'll make love to white ladies like he does. Yeah. Uh, do you have a receptionist, Bobby Lee? No, you I don't know anything. You should get a receptionist. Go to E Voice. Having your own receptionist would be great, but paying their salary. Salary is expensive. It made me feel great. Thousands and thousands of entrepreneurs use eVoice now. You enhance your image, you work faster, you make more money, and you don't have to pay a receptionist. Try eVoice right now for free. Go to eVoice.com. Use the promo code J, my name, J A Y, with eVoice as your virtual assistant. You get your own toll free number, dial by name directory. All your calls get professionally answered and routed wherever you are. eVoice types them out onto your phone. That's boss move right there. That's it. You can operate like a top exec. Stay lean like a startup. eVoice is the way to go. I believe in eVoice. I want you to believe in eVoice. I want you to try eVoice for free. You like that word? Free. 30 days. Go to eVoice.com. Promo code J. My name, J-A-Y. eVoice.com. Promo code J-A-Y. Or go to jmore.com. Click the eVoice banner right now. Bobby Lee, what is your uh, Twitter handle? Bobby, Bobby Lee, Lee Live. Live. And my Instagram is Bobby Lee Live. And let me tell you something, okay? When I didn't respond to you last week for, for doing this, mm-hmm. you got a little bit – and I never use, I never get scared, but I got scared with you. Really? Can I show you the text? I have it right here. Uh, oh, I, I have it right here. I have, I have Why don't you wear too. underpants, by the way? What? I didn't text I you. I always see the crack of your rear end when you get fine. up. That's fine. Don't look down there, dude. My eyes are up here. Bobby Lee right here. I Jay wrote, Moore. ready to podcast again? No answer. <laughs> Want to come on my radio show Wednesday at 11.15? No answer. Then we could podcast after that around noon in the valley. No answer. Next day, W. what the fuck? WTF? Yeah. Question mark. And you wrote, yes. I'm in, I mean. Like I, you, free, you wrote, yes. I said, I mean. I said, I'm in, I mean. Yeah, but yeah. You, you wrote, yes, and you realized, like, you kind of, I, it's like a freak out. I, yeah, I mean, I'm in, I mean. <laughs> yeah. Why are you afraid? I got scared because there's only, like, five people on planet Earth that I would respond that way, and then you're one of them. Who are the other four? 
I Kim think Jong Rogan Un. would be one. Kim Jong Un. Kim Jong Un. Joe Rogan. Um, um, Larry David. Yeah. And then um, maybe Margaret Cho. Margaret was a uh, very. Are you friends with Margaret? I just saw her last Saturday. Oh no! Like you, a you week and a half ago, you could have bought a ticket. I don't know. Friends? Are you friends with her? I love her. She's like she's like my um, aunt or something. Aunt, my sister. I love her. She- how come? How come black <laughs> people say aunt and white people say aunt? I'm not black though. I know. I'm asking you. A aunt is the point. way you're supposed to say it. Are you sure? Yeah, because ants are the little creatures that crawl around or whatever. I agree with you. But have you? Ha- I agree with you, Jay. What? But you have noticed that, right? Yeah, whatever, dude. It's like so people say tomato. No, no one says tomato. I do. No one. <laughs> Where are my tomatoes? You never say that. Yes, I do. Do you say erster? What? What's that? That's the rest of the song. It's the next verse. Of what song? You say tomato, I say tomato. Let's call the whole thing off. Yeah. You say pajamas, I say pajamas. You say oyster, I say erster. I, don't, oyster, I only know erster. the tomato part of that song. Thank potato, you. potato? Yeah. Potato, I mean potato to potato, yeah. You say uh, you say Bobby Lee, yeah, and I say hilarious. Oh, what a kind person! Bobby Lee live on Twitter. Now look, you have, Bobby a, Lee. You have little lips. I just noticed that about yourself. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like they're like you're like a pecker muppet. Lips. You're like a muppet. I have pecker lips. Yeah, yeah. Wow, that's interesting. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> My lips are like tingling. There's like paper cuts. Oh, oh, paper cut lips. Yeah, that's my new. That's my new call sign. But you, like hey. your face is made out of felt or something. Breaker one nine. This is paper cut lips. Make fun of me now, Bobby Lee. Yeah, you're a chink. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I love it. What am I supposed it, to? It reminded me in Nam back when I was in Nam. You were never in Vietnam. Bobby. I was three years ago. I went surfing. Really? Yeah. You went surfing in Vietnam. It was amazing. You realize there's Newport Beach right down the street, right? I understand that, but I love the smell of napalm. In the morning. In the morning. Smells like. There we go. Smells like. I don't know. It's Apoc- apocalypse now. Yeah, I, I don't know the, the line. Smell of napalm in the morning. Yeah. It smells like victory. 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 <laughs> <laughs> we tell a story about you selling corn. I know it's in your act, but no, no. no, no. I, I, first of all, I haven't oh. told that joke in fifteen years. Number so one what? and number two, I'm not going to tell that joke. What? I'm not asking you to tell a joke. I'm asking you to tell me the actual story. Okay, well, That's the Eddie Hackett okay, there's told me, don't call them jokes, call them stories. You tell a guy it's a joke, he already knows you're putting them on. Yeah. But if you tell somebody it's a story, they go, I can't believe this happened to the guy. Well, the actual story story is different from how I told it on stage, though. It wasn't my father that gave me that corn. I used to sell corn on the side of the road in um, Escondido, California. Okay. It was next to a freeway. Now, aren't there corn fields for that exact purpose? I used to do that, too. I used to cut you down were... corn in Oceanside. You know what I mean? Yes. And I met this old, fat eight Japanese man named Donald Yasuachi. Okay? Donald Yasuachi, right? We used to – he – when I – I can't say this on, on, on air. But oh, this it, is, you can say whatever – Yeah, but he, I don't want him to hear what I was about to say. Well, that's a fake name you just gave him anyway. Go ahead. No, let's just call him – no, no, because now this you already gave the fake name out, so just go ahead. Oh, the fake name is right. Donald, Donald Yasuachi, yeah. Anyway, I can't tell that story, but I'm going to tell the other story. <laughs> uh, the other story is is that Why? he got me the job Please. chopping corn. No, I Please. cannot do it now. Why, did he molest you too? No, I didn't. No, no. no that'd be disgusting. He's Asian. But anyway, um, <laughs> can I say that on your podcast, or are you going to bleep me? You can say whatever. Like you did on the Fox News. You that was uncalled for. Y- no. That was uncalled for what you did. What did I do? You go, you can't say jungle Asians on, t- on radio. You can't. Yeah, you can. No, you can't. You can't say nappy-headed hoes. Oh, that's right. You can't say... But what I'm saying is, is that there are Asians that live in the jungle, and that's all I'm saying. Right. Last time you were on my podcast, yeah. you had a lawsuit, and people were hate-mailing oh, that's you. that's right. That's right. And you wouldn't let me say jungle Asian. You're going, seriously, don't say it. I'm in so much trouble. So when you said jungle Asians, you, you being a comic. People take things so literally. It's like, I'm man, just yeah, telling chill jokes, out. Have man. some chamomile tea, bro. <laughs> Everything's good. A little cayenne pepper. Clear you right out, bro. Yeah. Uh, Bobby Lee Live. I like that you're coming on the podcast pretty much just to promote your Twitter page. I like this. And what's the hashtag? Listen, I, I'll be more honest. More stories. Hashtag more stories. Let Bobby Lee know Can you I say came something? No, yes, I, I did it because you asked. I'll do anything you ask. Really? I really would. I wouldn't do anything like sexual. Your, no, that's like, crazy. Oh. No, don't do that, sir. What if it's not sexual? What if it's just friction? No, if it, let, no be real. Ask me something and I'll set, tell, you, tell you if I would do it for you or not. I need you to fly to New York for me, pick up a package and come back. Yeah, I would do it. Really? Yeah, but first class? 
Uh, let me see what my miles are. We'll get back to it. Okay. But you wouldn't blow me. I wouldn't blow you, no. What about... I can't... What I'm about, not gay. I wouldn't about, do it. I'm not gay either, but if it feels good... For a laugh? What about licking my thighs while I I'm masturbate? not going to... My tongue doesn't go on your face. I or on your body, I mean. My thighs. Or your skin. What about the package you're picking up in New York was another guy's package? Oh, that's interesting. Is it like severed off of his body and it's in a brown box or what something? What if it's another uh, a Korean man and you pick him up and I want you guys to fly back together and blow each other in first class? <laughs> No. All right. I don't want to blow any man, but like... No, nobody wants to blow anybody. Gay people don't even want to blow each other. Yeah, but they do it just for the laughs. No, it's very... It's good for your health. <laughs> oh, it's it very is. good. A lot protein. of vitamin There's E, protein, protein, protein yeah, E. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. like an... Really, it's just an avocado that comes out of your dick. Yeah, it's it's God shake. Yes, yeah, exactly. It's a God shake. It's a God shake. Yeah, yeah. Bobby Lee, tell us about selling corn. <laughs> this is the weirdest job. The Why? job... I had a paper out, and I had the afternoon paper route, like the old people get the afternoon paper. So you yeah. just throw them in a dumpster and go, oh, I guess, and you would go collecting. They go, I never got my paper. <laughs> but they were old, so you'd convince them they forgot. Yeah. Well, no one would come to my corn stand. I had a corn stand, and um, these Mexican guys, can I say this? Um, There's nothing you can't say. I want to say these Mexican guys, um, they made the sign, but they didn't know how to speak English. So the, it said cron. <laughs> <laughs> it said cron, number one. And number two, I remember like three days in a row, no one came. Like I mean, no one stopped by. You held a sign that said Kron. Kron, right? And my dad said, you, you, you're doing it wrong. I go, what do I do? He goes, you have to yell the corn, right? So because it's next to a freeway. So people are going 55 miles per hour. I'm going, Kron! <laughs> <laughs> and did anybody stop? Eventually they did. And they, they, all these were old white people. And they freaked me out, old white people. Old white people really are exceptional at, at buying roadside fruits and vegetables. Because we all pass that sign. Like strawberries. And you go up like, you drive north on the five. And it's like strawberries and, uh, you know, through Oxnard. And you go, I should just pull over. I mean, how often do you get just right out of the, you know, patch strawberries and blue. And you just go, fuck it. You go, fuck it. Or I can just keep driving. Yeah. Which is much easier. I've never stopped for anything on the side of the road. And I've never helped anybody with like a flat tire or nothing. Because uh, you're a bad person. <laughs> no, I want to. <laughs> yeah. But then I would be late. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. I think that's the key with the old people is they know that they might not even make it to the destination. Might as well stop over for a snack. That's not a bad point. And, but when you – every time have you ever had a flat, pyre, flat tire and people stop for you? I've had a flat tire. Have you had a flat tire? <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. No, I, I've never – I know because I, I know how to do it. Really? You don't know how to do it? Well, see, the cars I drive are very, very, very fancy. <laughs> fancy so cars. I don't even know where they keep the spare. Like right. once the spare was on my hood and it's a whole – because I had my jungle cat. Yeah, I drive a Yaris, so, you know. What? A Toyota Yaris. What is a Yaris? What I'm does kidding. that mean? I have a, a Prius. <laughs> I'll try to make a joke because it's the cheapest Toyota car. And is it really? Yeah. I don't know anything about Toyota cars or cars at all, really. Well, you, I'm like a terrible car What person. do you drive? A Mercedes? Range Rover. Oh, but I have a nice. kid, yeah. Yeah, you need that. A lot that. of luggage, and two dogs, a kid, a wife. Yeah, you need that. Uh, Bobby Lee Live, do you tweet a lot? <laughs> once a day. <laughs> <laughs> once, just, that's it? <laughs> I, do once a, I do once a day tweets. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> what? I'm, I'm here. <laughs> I'm here with a panic attack. <laughs> Did you know that? No, yes. <laughs> when, I, when I blink like that, when I blink like that, I have panic attack. <laughs> Bobby Lee. <laughs> Blinked at me just now. <laughs> like Mr. Magoo. <laughs> but you're super hyper focused. Look at my eye. I can't do it. Oh I gotta get out of here. I gotta get out of here. What, do you really? I'm fine. I'm sweating for some reason. It's hot. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. I'd open a window, I, but I these windows up, don't I open. We're trapped. Here. I hate it. That man with the thick mustache. <laughs> he freaked Schwartz? me out too. Yeah. He gave you free stuff. I know, but he had like weird hands. Should we bring him in? <laughs> it, no, don't bring him in. Don't bring him in. Don't bring him in. Please don't. No, it'll make me a panic. Please don't do it. Don't, don't do it. Don't do it. Bobby, you don't, talk. You, don't, please don't do it. No, please don't, don't do it. But you talk so much about panic attacks. Why don't you just get medicated and get treatment for I will, panic No, because I'm in uh, programs. I can't do it. What do you mean? Pro- oh, but I'm in a program. I, know, I, I get can't medicated. Do it. I can't do it. I'm fine. It's it just it's one of those momentary things, and then I could just pass it once I figure out why I'm here. And I know I know why I'm here. You're here to have children. You're here to co-create. With no, God. I'm here specifically with you. Oh, you didn't know why you were in this. Now building? I know. I know. Okay, because it I'm is fine. like foreign to you. What no, about- I love you, and I want to, uh, and, and, and want to help. I want to help. What are your? Th- thank you for helping me. <laughs> uh, do people heckle you when you're out on the road? Like your show is really. Like, you're a freewheeling, you're not super structured. Like, when you get up on stage, it is, like, a great time. Oh, like, thank it's you. the Wild West. 
And I've noticed when I have nights, no one's coming in that door, buddy. Don't worry. Okay. I notice when I have nights like that, when it's like the Wild West and I'm freewheeling and nutty, for some reason the audience feels like, oh, we can all get involved and yell shit out. And it was Ryan Sickler. I was like, why the fuck? I have ads on here. That's why I keep holding it. Ryan Sickler goes, uh, I asked Ryan Sickler, I go, what the fuck? These people keep yelling out. It's make, because I got a new hour that I'm trying to get down to time. And he goes, it's you. It's your energy of one of like, Hey, we're all in this together. So then they start yelling out, and you're like, don't fucking yell out, and they get all confused. But I would imagine your stand-up show, people yell their dicks off. No, I used to do that, right? But now, recently, I've learned not to do that. Because the thing is, is that you invite it. Yeah. Right? So when I go open, like, going crazy, I go in the audience, and I, like, show people my pubes, and I jump on top of people. At that point, they're like, oh, it's a, you know, it's a sex party. Right, and they can say or do whatever they want. So now I start off slow, a little more quiet. You know what I mean? And then at the end, I'll do it. And then at that point, it's too late. It's almost over. And what do you have? A, how much new material do you have? Are you going out with? You can have my water, honey. No, I don't want yours. That's fine. Aww, Thank you. Right. You're very nice, though. Sure. What do you mean? Uh, uh, like you, when you because you used to go out and touch people's heads and faces and lay in their lap and show your pubes in the audience. Yeah. Like all of a sudden you're like, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to go on the stage and start slowly and do like a show. Yeah. Like what is it? Just I seems, just tell jokes like everyone else. I I, I you know I've been writing a lot lately. Why but... you tell some of them on the podcast. No, I don't want to do that. You, you're trying to set me up for it. I didn't know it until I was halfway through <laughs> it. I was like, well, give us yeah. an example of some of this. Why should people come see well, you? Well, can I tell you? I'll tell you why, though. And they go, tell us about that guy with the cornfield that no, you can't not, say. Well, I don't do that joke anymore, but my point is, is this. Okay, can I tell you what happened last week, though? Oh, yeah. I can tell you? Yeah. Okay. So my mom calls me, right? And this is how she opens. First of all, immigrant parents, they make phone calls that should have never happened in the first place. Okay. <laughs> right. so, okay this is what she goes. Papi. I go, yeah, mom. Daddy, he don't wake up. That's what she says. I go, is he dead? This is what she says. I don't know. Call the ambulance. Call me right back. Two minutes later. He wake up. <laughs> oh, God. Now, did you, did, that phone call should have never happened. You, and your parents have lived in California for the last 40 years. Over. They live in Phoenix. All right. Well, you sold corn in California. I assumed you were living with your parents. I did at the time, yeah. Okay. But they live in Phoenix now. So it's, it's strange to me that the accent is still so thick. Why? They, they, my mom was, lived during the Korean War. Yeah? Yeah, you think she'd be like, hello, hello. Hello, Gov. Yeah, yeah, no. She goes, oh. How about I give the undercarriage a bit of the how's your father? Say no more. <laughs> yeah. Your wife, does she like photographs? So she, she's Korean, so they'd speak in the accent. But you don't lose the accent. You, you do, look, if you do a movie and they need you to do a, an accent, you're going to learn the accent. That's and different, lose. though. Why you, is it different? Because the thing is, is that you, when you were, my mom was a baby, she learned. Wait a minute, you lost me. Your mom's a baby? No, when she was a baby, I said. When your mom was a baby? Yeah, she grew up in Korea. <laughs> and oh, he, your mom grew up in Korea? In Korea, yeah. Your, your mom's Korean, too. My parents are Korean, and they came here in their 20s, okay. never speaking English. So when they got here... They, you I'm know, not kissing judgment on your parents. You, well, you, you seem to think, though, that, like, I'm sorry, I don't want to fight with you, but you seem to think <laughs> but, that when you come to the United States, that people all, all of us out of nowhere will speak like us. I'm saying after 40 years, you would not go, hello. Yes, you would. Like a little Because my lady. point is, is this. What they don't do is they don't assimilate to society, right? So their friends and family right, members are all Korean, and they still speak Korean. So rarely do they speak English unless they're at work or something. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. So they speak Korean in the house. Yeah, that's all they said <clears throat> growing up. You know what I mean? So it's like... I, I, you know, I'm influenced very easily. So, like, if I went to England, I'm going to start talking with a little British accent after, like, my fifth day in England. Yeah. Some people call it being a douchebag as well. But, yeah, like, but if you're in the South, eventually they're going to be like, y'all y'all, uh, y'all want something to eat? Especially after a couple of beers. You're like, I, don't hey, think, man. I don't think so. I think you're wrong. Really? Yeah. I think uh, maybe I'm, you I'm, I'm, because – I'm wrong about me? No, I think maybe you because you're that guy. You know what I mean? Douchebag? No, you're not that douchebag. You're just – an absorber or whatever, but most people... If I move to Korea, I guarantee you in two You're years... You're not going to speak. I'm going to go... No, you, no, you won't. Uh, daddy, no, wake up. No. Uh, probably two months. No. I'm assimilating. Yeah. Asians don't assimilate well. Is that what you're saying? No, that we're s the smartest people on earth. Is that what you're saying? No, you said your parents have not assimilated. I'm asking you, is I that I'm just saying... your parents or is that Asians in general not... There's no argument here. I don't know why your hackles are up. And what are hackles? You have no idea what you're talking about. 
I think, let me tell you what I think. Yeah. I think Asians, all of them, are the single greatest uh, citizens that come to this country from any other country. That's fantastic. They pay all their bills. That's they don't right. commit crimes. Uh-huh. They're not in stupid gangs. Uh, well, well they are. are. Yeah, I know they, they are. are. But I shouldn't have I left that part out. They take care of their elderly, something white and black people have long let that ship <laughs> sail. you 65, get in the home, give me my fucking check. I don't want to wipe your ass. You're out of here. Asian people, there's always like that 105-year-old grandma sweeping the driveway, and you're like, whoa, yeah. this lady, they're really like hanging in there. The yeah. family structure is incredible. Exercising, you always see like a Korean guy in the park with just like a rope holding it over his head. <laughs> there's always like some improvised, yeah. improvised exercise at Bob Hope Park. <laughs> Just holding like a tennis ball up over his head, and you're like, "Wow, that looks like it's beneficial for my heart." What yeah, he's doing? Yeah, they get it going. I go to the Korean spa right at late night, right? People are exercising in the rooms. Like, like these, there's these rooms where people sleep, and you're hut, 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 hut. People are just doing weird exercises in there, you know? In the Korean spa. In the Korean spa, it's like steam and massage. Oh yeah, I love but it. I needed you to know. I, I'm, I even say that on stage when there's a lot of Korean people, like when I'm in Irvine and stuff, and in San Francisco, they're they are the actual best. Like all your Canadians, Germans, Irish, Italians, throw them out the window. The Asians are the best. I don't know why they buy beachfront property and walk around in long sleeves, sunglasses, and visors so that the sun never touches their body. Because we like the yellow skin when we because when we well turn then dark, move some move to fucking Seattle where it rains. No, all the because time. we like the atmosphere. But my point is, is this okay? The thing is, is that when we tan, right, we look weird. <laughs> Yeah, we look Aborigine or whatever. No, I've seen or you. Filipino or something. Uh, yeah, you don't no, want to look not, Filipino. Not, not, Filipi- be- not that Filipinos look weird. I because love because they're like. Uh, what? What are Filipinos and they're Taiwan great people. people. They're like they're uh, great people. They're like yeah, um, they're great people. Now, yeah, you won't now. see it now. No, I'm trying to get you fired. <laughs> <sighs> I'm kidding. But you, that was very nice of you to say that. But the thing is, is that they don't lose the accents when they come to the United States, and that's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. It's not ridiculous. If you live here a long time and you have to go to the market, and somebody goes four thirty five, please, you're not going to go. You know, eventually you would just. I would think. You would start talking more like the people that are around you all the time. But he's right. If, but what you're saying is they're not around English speaking white counter help all the time. They're in a Korean area of town. They have Korean family. They're watching Korean television. Yeah, they're not so watching when, Little House in the Prairie or like, you know, Friends. What if they watch Little House in the Prairie and they get freaked out because that's what they think America's like right now? <laughs> yeah. Well, I know horses. Uh, yeah, I know horses. You know, I don't know how to plow. <laughs> You, know? <laughs> you must tell the plow. It doesn't say plow. It says walp. Yeah. What You're kind sign? of clothes are they wearing? That's I don't know. Too long for me. Those, those are like curtains or something. <laughs> I like that a lot. Yeah. So, you know, that's obviously what... No one's coming in, Bobby. I, I have to do that every once in a while. I'm so sorry. I've noticed. Okay. Uh, I uh, I was in San Francisco and there was a Chinese woman, definitely Chinese woman, uh, according to her name tag. I said China. And she was jogging on the street corner. I'm about. I'm pulling up the Cobb's Comedy Club, and she's jogging in place. She has a denim jacket, white denim pants, flower shirt. What goes better than two different denims and a floral print and Reeboks? But old Reeboks, like 90210 Luke Perry with like laces and Velcro How old Reeboks. Is she? she was about 80, okay. and she's jogging in place at the red light. Oh. And I look at the driver. I go, "Look at home, girl, getting it together." I look. Light turns green. Walks across the street. <laughs> I was like, that is counterculture, man. <laughs> like, you will not tell her what to do ever. That was the best. That was the weirdest sprint eight training I've ever but seen. But that's out of, that's out of, because of control and power. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, cause immigrants, when they cross the crosswalk, they slow down to show white people that you're not going to control us. Yeah, but you're supposed to walk slowly across a crosswalk. So you are actually being controlled. No, because I don't do that. I run across. Because <laughs> you're batshit crazy. Like no, no, I'm not bad. No, I mean, it's because it's, uh, I don't want people to wait. Do you understand what I'm saying? Have you ever I noticed know, that yeah, African yeah. Americans, right? Oh, they take forever. They take so forever. And they swing their arms like this when they walk. And they kind of sway, you know what I mean? And then they'll look at you like, oh, this is how fast I'm going to go for you. You know what I mean? And you're like, come on, man. You really hate blacks. No, I love African Americans. Like really? Crazy. I just, I didn't call them blacks, I call them African Americans. Why would you call How do you know they're from Africa? That's true. What part of Africa is Carl Lewis from? I don't know who that is. I don't know. Carl Lewis? Carl Lewis? I know Carl Lewis, the runner. Yeah. Did I get that right? Yes. So then that's that. Name an African American. <laughs> Any African American. Any of them. Uh, Morgan Freeman. What part of Africa is Morgan Freeman from? That's the, that's the crazy part. He, you know he's from Africa, but you no, don't you know don't. specifically. You could be from the Indies? You, could be from, you, don't think, you think black people are only from Africa? For the most part, though. Cubans, from... are, Cubans are black, a lot of them. 
There are some southern. First like, of all, raise your fucking. I'm sorry, Russians. Oh, I said some raise Russians. It. Some Russians, right? Yeah. In the southern part of Russia look Asian because yeah. they're so close to China. I love those guys. I know. Me too. They're like Bjork. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Are you Bjork? I love Bjork. Right, but uh, me too. But the thing is, is this: is that that's just a few. So, like, we're gonna make the assumption that Russians are white. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying? Bobby Lee just did his walk off. He dropped the mic. On Russians are white. You're really like jacked up about this whole uh, race war you have going on. I, know, in your head. I don't have a race war. My point is, is that I love African Americans. I voted for the guy, and that's fine. Who's that? You vote? You voted for Cory Booker in Newark? Yeah, I did. <laughs> you voted for Obama? I did twice. How's that working out for you? Let's not talk about that. It's working out good. You voted for him twice? Yeah. I don't think that's allowed. What do you mean? Oh, different elections. Two Never. different oh, elections. Yeah, 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 yeah. Maddie, you've done it again. <laughs> <laughs> he's incorrigible. There's just some things that he's doing recently that's just kind of, oh my God, here we go. But uh, What? The surveillance and stuff, I don't think that, that's cool. And then also on top of that, the, the um, drone strikes. You don't... I, don't? I don't believe in drone strikes. What, what? are you doing? What? Don't do that. Bobby, what the fuck are you talking about? What are you doing? Don't do that. Why do you do that? <laughs> I say I don't know what you're talking about. I'm going to leave. Why? Because you're doing something. I, I, don't, I don't know. I need oh, my God. Don't, uh, All right. No, Bobby, <laughs> Bobby, stop. Bobby, it was only so I could record it on my phone. Bobby, come on. All right. Bobby Lee, ladies and gentlemen. Come on back, honey. I'll just film it right here. Please, please don't do that, I won't do it again, but I'll put this up on YouTube, okay? okay? Blow me a kiss for the camera. Are you really that out of breath right now? I'm fine. You're freaked out? Um... Your parents, your brothers and sisters? I have a brother, Steve. How old is your brother? He's 38, Steve? and he's, he's in Phoenix taking care of my father. See, Asians taking care of their elderly. Yeah. I have only positive. Well, you don't like love? When did white people lose love? Why are you, everything I say. Well, well you like said that earlier, though, you said that white and blacks, right, we don't take care of our elders. Not like the Asians do. The Asians. But what happens to the love? We are selfish people. And we put people in homes. But They're, you don't remember when you fell on your bike and your father goes... me. Spe- I haven't put anybody in a home. Bobby, relax. Okay. You keep thinking like you, you're on like point counterpoint. This isn't, you know, re- it's okay, buddy. I'm not fighting with you. I love you. Yeah, but you it sounds is, like we're fighting. No, right? this is how I talk, though. Oh, really? Yeah. I thought you told me you Fucking... If you had a nickname, like if you were a star in any sport, what yeah. would you want your nickname to be? Um, would you work Korean into it? If you were like in a white-dominated sport, yeah, like basketball, yeah. filled with whites, yellow f- fever. Isn't yellow like? In, it, and I'm asking you for real. You've helped me understand I, a lot because I you taught me that saying China man is completely racist. <laughs> I don't say it anymore. It's so racist. Yeah, but I didn't know It's that. like saying the N-word. How do you not know that, Jay? Because I don't hang around with Asian people that don't assimilate, that teach me, by the way, that's completely racist. To say How many Chinese. Asian friends do you have? You, Ken, uh, Margaret, I guess, is a friend. She's been on the podcast, but I would like to talk to her more. Yeah. Probably, if I had to guess, I would say f- six. Five? That's great. That's a great ratio. Is it really? It really is. I was so embarrassed because we're only number. we're only um, four or five percent of the the population. Well, I only have ten friends, so you guys are forty percent of my life. That's fantastic. No, I would say uh, close my like dear friends that are Asian, none, and then I would say like friends like you and me that are friends, yeah. just friends, friends. I would say two. We're kind of though our relationship is more of a boss. Employee kind of a situation. Do you feel that way? Yeah, because I used to open for you, so I always have that mentality that you're the boss. <laughs> <laughs> that was amazing. People that, was the man, that was the man in the no, mustache. That's like that old uh, Newhart episode, like, don't worry, Bobby. No one's laughing at you, and the elevator doors open, yeah. and everybody's laughing in the elevator. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. Right, you say that, that's and everybody what, next exactly. starts laughing. He's amazing. Thin walls at Fox Sports. Uh, but, yeah, but I, I think... I'm always like sold on the brotherhood of stand-up comedy, and I just think of you as like another comic. Okay. And you don't open for me anymore because you're a huge headliner in your own right. I know, but still, it's like when I see Dice or you or <laughs> and I see even Paulie because I used to open for him too, and even Mencia for that mark. I I, I think they're em- employers. Who? I, mean, I mean, I love you, and we're friends, and if you. Something happened, like where you were sick or something, yeah. or you had AIDS or something. 
Like if you had full blown AIDS, right? I would be like by your bedside. Well, it's just a matter of time, really. Yeah, yeah. I would be caressing your head, going, "Oh no, Jay, don't." If you ran into the guy that taught you how to cut corn again, yeah, would, Donald Yasuwachi. Would you look at him like a boss? Yes. Okay. Is and that, him and I had some weird things that happened that I can't talk about. Is that cultural? What the boss employee relationship that stays embedded in your mind? Because when I read the book Outliers, most plane crashes. Like South Korea, we're just fucking putting planes into mountains on the regular, and it's because the co-pilot can't say to a pilot, we got to put the radar on now because there's such a hierarchy of respect and a certain way and layers of speaking. That's interesting that you say that. You have to say something like, the weather today is interesting, and you have to hope the pilot goes, yeah, it's fucking cloudy. We should put the radar on. And then as they're figuring out this language, the plane goes down. That's interesting that you say that. I think that is cultural because – like my brother's friends, like that are Korean. There's one guy I can. Well, I'm gonna say because I don't. You know, there's one guy named um, Alex, right? Who, when he sees me, he's very quiet and submissive, right? Oh, buddy. And he kind of goes like he lets me talk. He's more of a listener, right? And I think that's respect. But he has another friend named Danny Kim, who's just all up in my face. You know what I mean? And doesn't give me that respect, and therefore he's dead to me. But why is Danny Kim <laughs> is Danny Kim like the uh, Korean from, guy you see in Vegas, like blinged out, yeah, like Louis yeah, yeah. Vuitton sneakers? No, he's like, yo, what's up, dog? I, I love you on the TV, man. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? And he gets in my face, like smoking we, Newports. Like, yeah, hey, yeah. What's up, man? Yo, man, you and I gotta, you know, go do do stuff together. I go, no, no, no. How, where's the Korean respect? And the other guy, don't look, don't look at me in the eyes. Yeah, walk two steps behind. Yeah, me. yeah. You know what planes never crash? Virgin, British Airways. Uh, Qantas, it's because the British, when they get told by like the tower to circle around, they go, no, fuck that, we're coming in, this is stupid. Oh, really? They just that, that's override interesting. It. That's interesting. It's cultural. Yeah. Like the British are like, feel so superior to everybody because they colonize the whole world that when you get told, go around, you're like, no, we're losing fuel. And, and they go, well, I need you to circle, I'm full. And they're like, we're coming in, we're coming in right now. Whereas like uh, the Colombian airline and the South Korean airlines are like, okay, we circle. And they just keep going around. <laughs> Same accent. Yeah, well, Colombians and Koreans have the same accent. I didn't accent. know which one I wanted to use, <laughs> yeah, yeah. and I'm like, "Well, there's a hybrid between the two. That was amazing." Mira, yeah, circle, okay, I, uh, and also uh, losing fuel has no meaning to a tower. Like in translate, when you're in Korean and you're saying we're losing fuel, the tower, and you're, when you work at a tower, you're losing fuel. The moment you take off, it's the process of losing fuel because you want to land as close to empty as possible. Because uh, otherwise you're landing a missile filled with gasoline. Ah. So you dump fuel too when you're when you're getting closer and closer. Really? Oh yeah. So I could be walking down the street and it's like, is that rain? No, no it's that's completely fuel. vaporized by the time it gets to you. Oh, I don't you know. You won't. That. But that's a lot of smog stuff and stuff. You know. That's interesting that you say. So that. when you go like we're losing fuel, the tower thinks like, well, yeah, no shit. Hopefully, I hope you're. Bur- It'd be weird if you weren't. Uh, and they tell you to circle around, and the South Koreans just were like, "Okay," and they just kept circling around, circling around. But mostly with the South Koreans, it was the it was the co-pilot deferring to the pilot so long for like an hour, seeing a mountain approaching. How long they they still have that on here now? No, or? the official language of South Korean Airlines got switched to English. Oh, good. So there's no. That's just the time of the thing. Okay, I'm gonna walk Bobby through this. It's okay, buddy. Fine. Uh, it, they they switched South Korean Airlines and there's been no incidents since. Wow. Because in English, there's only one way to say we need to put the radar on. But in Korean, you know what it entails and you know the intricacies of the language and he's the pilot. I don't want to tell him how to do his job. So it, instead, I'm going to say it was sunny this morning. Yes, because it's not sunny anymore. The parenthetical is it's not sunny now. Ah. And I'm hoping the pilot goes – Sunny this morning, not sunny now, cloudy. We should probably put on the radar so we don't hit a fucking mountain. Wow. It's all in my new book, <laughs> Korean Pilots. How do you know this? Uh, I was in a book. Uh, <laughs> was it really in a book? Yeah, uh, Outliers by Malcolm Gladwell. Like every, nothing's, you know, there's no overnight success. We talk about that book more than anything on this podcast. It's like every podcast. It's le- you'll love it if you like to read. I do. Are you able to do it without moving your lips? No, 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 no. Uh, what? What are you doing? Why are you writing that down? He's writing down quotes for more quotes, which you can follow on Twitter. That's amazing. At more, M-O-H-R underscore quotes. And it's funny quotes from the podcast we put up on Twitter. That's all he's doing. This is like caring for the elderly right now. (laughs) And like I'm your relative and like he's the nurse that comes in like, whoa, 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 what's he doing right now? He's just changing out the catheter bag. Everything's good, Bobby. Don't worry about it. 
Wow. You ever had a catheter? The one, what does that do? Pee, pee, for pee? Pee pee hole? No, I never had that. Have you ever broken bones? No, I haven't. Mm. Have you ever seen a ghost? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Tell us about it. Um, I used to get possessed a little bit in, in high school. <laughs> Are you being serious? No, I'm being real. My, in fact, my, it, we live. <laughs> You're not joking. I'm not joking. <laughs> Possessed by drug demons or demons? We don't know. We don't know what it, my parents and I don't know what it is. How old were you when you got possessed? We lived in a place called Green Valley, and we think it was an Indian burial site. Uh-huh. What valley? Green Valley. Green Valley. Yeah. What state? San Diego. Okay. California. I'm treating it with the. Listen to me. You don't make me. fun of me though, because it's look, real. Look, look at me. Yeah. I'm treating the, the utmost respect. Yeah. Nothing I'm saying is a joke. Okay. I want to know this fucking story. Okay. Okay. I'm telling right. you that going in. All right. The the this. this uh, Half of our house, right? I think we, we think that there was an Indian bear. <laughs> forget it. Forget it. No. No, forget Because I don't know why you're laughing. I'll tell you why I'm laughing. Yeah. The words <laughs> in, in burial ground, for some reason, <laughs> yeah. even though that's what it is, yeah. I just think of the Brady Bunch. You think of the what? Brady Bunch. Why? Or Scooby Doo, like it's always in the burial ground, like in cartoons, like in the burial ground. The fact that it's something in real life right now, yeah, it's it's incredible. Like I can't even. Well, you'd believe- find like little arrowheads in the backyard and stuff. Yeah, no, I understand what an Indian burial ground is. I never met anybody that had an actual story about an Indian burial. Well, we ground. don't know that for a fact, but my parents, well, like our, my brother and I's bedroom was on the burial um, <laughs> site, half of the house. How do you know that the Indian burial ground? Because my, because I'll tell you why. Because my dad would never, my mom and dad never went to that side of the house. They instinctively knew. They would yell like if I had to wake up, they would go, "Bobby, wake up!" Right? But they wouldn't go in there because of the the ghosts. But they would let you sleep around with ghosts. Yeah, I don't know why. And the thing is, is this and Steve and my brother Steve. Yeah, and can I tell you, like there are things where happened where I would be sleeping. And then all of a sudden, I'm in the swimming pool. Like, literally at 3 in the morning. Like, I'd be, like, sleeping to go to school. And then, at th- and then all of a sudden, I'm in the swimming pool, like, with my p- PJs on or whatever I slept in, going, how the hell did I get in here? And then my brother, same thing. In fact, one time my brother, his eyes rolled back in his head. And he was doing convulsions, you know what I mean? And my aunt didn't know what to do. And I said, oh, he's just being possessed. What would you say when you woke up in the swimming pool? Were you standing in the swimming pool? Were you face down in the swimming pool? I would just be standing there in the swimming pool, you know what I mean? Like from the waist up and the shallow end going, why am I in the swimming pool? And that happened a bunch of times. Who puts a swimming pool in in the burial ground? They don't know. I I don't know. Now, and nobody saw you walking around going into no my parents are asleep. No, we lived in a suburb, right? I was going to say, maybe the ghost just really liked water aerobics. No? No. I don't know. Maybe, maybe they they love swimming. I don't know, but I, I really feel felt it. In fact, there was Maddie like boy. Now you know. Now you know exactly what it feels like the palm. <laughs> but I used to drop acid. <laughs> I used to drop. Oh, hold on a second. There was acid. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Left that One has out. nothing to do with the other. One has nothing to do with the other. You take acid, lay in bed. No, 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 no. You're like, I think I'm possessed by an Indian burial ground. <laughs> One has nothing to do with the other. Because this happened when I was a kid too, right? Okay. When I was in middle school, it happened. I didn't, t- didn't take acid then. But in my senior, no, maybe not senior, junior, early junior year. Did, yeah. The last time I took acid, you know what I mean? I saw them. The Indian burial ground ghost guys? Indians in my room. Really? Yeah, yeah. Bloody face, the whole headgear, and they just sat, stood there, not sat there, stood there, a couple of, two of them smiling at me. But I didn't care because I was on acid. It felt good. Were you like, finally, it's good to see you guys. Why yeah, yeah. And then, the knew, and then I knew. Were they and, wearing and then, wings? And then my parents, um, for years, I mean, we're thinking about selling the house, and then they did. And we got out of there, and we were so happy. That's amazing. Yeah. And you think you were possessed by dead Indians? Yeah. Dead Native Americans. I don't know what it was, but it was like some weird thing. You could did feel you it feel coming it? on, too. Really? Like, you'd be like laying there, and you could feel something inside you, you know? Bobby, I don't even... That's like the craziest story I've ever heard in my life. Why? What do you mean, Why? You get possessed by dead Indians, and they they put you in the goddamn swimming pool. It could be that, or it could be that we're crazy. Well, uh, we're all crazy, right? Yeah, I'm pretty crazy, but but I, I haven't seen a ghost since then. I mean, I would see, I would be at the comedy store, and I would see Gus every once in a while, but just from afar. I would feel b- breathing on my neck. Gus? Yeah. At I the comedy be, store? I don't know who he was, but it I was Gus. I, when I was on stage, it was very cold, 
and the audience would be completely quiet. I realized not only have I not gotten a laugh for like the first six minutes, no one's moved. Like they're frozen in time. Yeah. Like I'm looking at a picture. It's crazy. And I'm so caught up in my head that I don't even realize, oh, like it took me six minutes. And uh, I said to Louis Anderson once, These, I think this place is fucking haunted. And he goes, yeah, but they like you. Just tell them to knock it off. <laughs> And I went out again, and the audience, six, seven minutes in, no one moved the muscle, no one left, just staring at me, smiling. I go, stop yeah. fucking around with this room, ghost. Beat it. I'm just visiting. And then all of a sudden, everybody just starts laughing. They laughed at that. The audience laughed at that, like a release valve. Yeah. And I figured out, and if you don't believe in ghosts, then whatever, but it happened to me. I think the ghost can't make a room not laugh, but a ghost knows or a spirit or an entity knows the most influential person at like a table, a row of like 10. Yeah. They know like, if I'm not laughing, he's not going to be laughing. You're not going to be laughing because you have a employee type feeling with me. Yeah. So they knew which one person to zap and take out and kind of mellow out to make, to kind of put a malaise on like the next eight people. And then when they couldn't reach other people. They've already gotten a whole bunch of people kind of like zoned out. So then you're just in a room of fucking quiet people. You're not going to be laughing like wow. a giggling hyena. Yeah, yeah. And then when I when I said, stop fucking with me, ghosts. Leave these people alone. I'm only here to visit. Then everything got let loose. Like people started laughing like it was the greatest set I ever had in my life. Yeah. Yeah, they like you, the ghosts. <laughs> you know, once they put me on that celebrity diving show in the pool. <laughs> huh? Bobby John, Johnny Lee. Sanchez and I. Yeah. Right? Here's our Gus story. His name is Gus, by the way. Did you know that? No. The, the ghost at the comedy store, his name is Gus, and he was an ex, um, he was a mafia member back in the 50s when it was Ciro's. Right? Apparently he was murdered there. Okay? So one time, this is in 97, him, um, Johnny and I did a show in Bakersfield. So we ke- kept one of our cars in the parking lot, and we drove together to Bakersfield. And was right, we drove back, it was like four in the morning, we're sitting, standing there in the parking lot, and we look up, in the the the, the, the hallest uh, window, and we see a face, no features, no eyes, no nose, but a round face with a top hat. You could see his hands against the window, looking at us. Right? Him and I looked up. We screamed at the same time. Then looked back up. He was gone. Gone. You just said since the pool, you have no ghost. He, no, no possess. No possession. Oh, I've not been possessed because I'm strong now, man. Okay. 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 I apologize. <laughs> How do you keep yourself? Do you feel it coming on and say, you're not getting into my body. This belongs to me. Matty boy? What happened? Sonny, put the mic a little closer. Oh, right so my, I hear that. How do you, do you feel a possession coming on and tell it to get lost? Not no, today? I just feel like I'm no, I know who I am spiritually and stuff that I'm fine now. I don't, I'm not weak in that way, you know? I video you running out of this room only because I went like this and I looked over your shoulder. Is yeah. that strong? Yeah, but I also do it as a, a bit, too. See, I, that's how good an actor you are. I can't separate the bit. It's all a bit. Really? I mean, you seem to think that, like, how... Could... You have panic attacks. I and mean, when someone I tells you that, that you got to respect but your I've, space. I know. But the thing is, is that I perform live in front of hundreds of people, whatever, you know, and I, you know, I'm, I do TV shows live or, you know I mean? I have confidence. No one's questioning your confidence. So what I'm saying is, is that... If I was really that guy, then how would I even work, really, you know? You just pull it together when it matters, like everybody else. That is well, that's kind of true, too. I try to become confident just now, and it didn't work, but you're uh, right. So you believe in <laughs> possessions, and you believe in demonic possessions, exorcisms? I do. I don't Have believe you ever it. talked to your parents about this? Yeah, my parents all the time. And then they just ref- absolutely deny that any- you're crazy. No, they know. Really? That's you know, my dad. Uh, that why I never g- g- come in your room because I see ghosts and I don't want to go there. What if your dad saw cowboy ghosts? <laughs> <laughs> He's so into yeah, oh, that's over yeah. The cowboy, you saw cowboy? Yeah, I saw gone and a cowboy win. They win. Yeah, you know? yeah. yeah. Doesn't seem like Korean uh, culture, Asian culture. I know that's steeped in uh, the elders. And going back generations and generations and super deep respect for those that came before you. But you never hear about like a Japanese like a fucking haunted house. It's It seems like a supremely American and Eastern European thing like goblins and spooks and – Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Well, no because it's like if you see like old Asian horror films, you're wrong about that. There's some spooky ones. No. So they do believe in it. 
I, oh, okay. They do believe in it. Yeah. See, I learn things about the Asians when I'm around you. What do you mean? They believe in Godzilla. No, they don't really believe in Godzilla. I know, but I'm just saying they created that. Right, but that's not a ghost. I'm saying like Americans will sit around and be like, oh my God, one time there was like this weird feeling in my bedroom. Yeah. And it got all cold. And I'm like, you need to get out of here, ghost. I'm Catholic. <laughs> yeah. And like you never see a fucking, you know, Chinese, a Chinaman. Don't, don't say, say that. that. You never see a Chinese guy going like, oh, oh man. man. Uh, the old the Chinese man come in and come say, in, yeah. boo. boo. Yeah. He say boo. Hey, I, I'm going to tell you. I'm I gonna, run I, away. I, I sell the house. I have a theory. Okay. You want to hear my theory? Yeah. Okay. If you look up serial killers on Wikipedia, okay, okay you know, China has only had four in their history, four serial killers. Okay. In America, we've had thousands, and yeah. we're like a very young country. Yeah. Okay. We're great at it. Yeah. Thailand is pretty much. I was in Thailand, right? And I asked, "What's the murder rate?" It's like rel- relatively safe. You know what I mean? And slave. there's relatively slave, slave, and there's really. Two, I think Thailand's had two. Two, ser- two serial killers. Two ever? They, ever, right? But They did harbor Pol Pot, but that's another thing. My but po- a lot of ladyboys. A lot of ladyboys. Lady, lady boys. party. But here's my theory. My theory is this, okay? okay? But Thailand is also a Buddhist, right? An Eastern religion kind of a country, yeah. right? And there's really no such thing as the devil, mm-hmm. right? So what I'm saying is, is that because we live in a Christian society and we do have some, something called the devil that's inherent – yeah. into our culture, yeah. that people manifest that. Absolutely. I right? think that's brilliant. Buddy. So I think that people in the United States, the reason why we have all these killings and this and that is because that we have something called the devil or We've created Satan. created a boogeyman. Exactly. And when you're negative enough, that boogeyman manifests itself. Manifests itself. Yeah. And in the Eastern culture, I, I think you're absolutely correct on this. In yeah. Buddhism, it's all the self, the self being present right now. And the mm-hmm. boogeyman is just your own negative thoughts. And you realize the detriment they're doing to yourself at a young age. And you're taught through meditation to eliminate them and pop the bubbles and have them be erased when you're meditating. Yeah. There is, the boogeyman is your own thoughts. Thoughts in general. Not even bad thoughts. Thoughts are bad news. And yeah. you want to have a singular mind. Yeah, and also as a kid, you don't manifest something that you don't even know that exists, right? right. You would just not, you know, but here as a kid. I'm the god of hellfire. <laughs> you will die in perpetuity. Yeah. Roar, and I just roar. think that, that that's another thing that religion does. That's great. Uh, so what else do you not like about the United States? I love everything about it. Squarespace, all in one platform that makes, do you have a website? No. You don't have a website? You don't have a website? You do. You. That's Nick Swartz's impression of me. I do. You don't have a a day you do the liquor game. A day. Why don't you have a website you could sell tickets? Wait, is, is, is it 1997? I don't need a b- website, dude. Really? Yeah. Just baller status? Everybody knows when Bobby Lee brings the milkshake. No, the sometimes yard. I don't. I, sometimes I don't sell tickets, but the thing is, is that. Well, this guy. It's just the guy. Don't okay. worry about it. I don't sell tickets That's in cuss. some markets, in some markets, but it's like at that point, it's. What markets are you not selling? I don't do well in some, some markets I do great in. I stopped Chicago. Going to- I Amazing. Stopped, really? Yeah. I stopped going to San Jose because they just weren't coming out. I do well there. But there's a lot to, of Asians there. Then I go to San Francisco, which is like 40 miles away. I kill it. Oh, you kill it. Yeah. Yeah. It's weird. Yeah. I go to like um, Dallas. I don't do well. Really? Austin, I kill it. More Asians? No. It's just, it, it needs to be like You said Asians about San Jose. That don't act it, like I made it. Uh, like don't act like I... It's got to be... <laughs> It's got to be like a younger, hipper, kind of a cool... Here's the thing I tell people a lot that listen to the podcast. I'm like, when people go like, how often do you come to Vancouver? I'm like, well, I'll know Monday. Like, if if no one shows up, I'm 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 never going back to Spokane, Washington. Yeah, exactly. I do one market once. I went there once. Yeah. Nobody showed up, and I made... How many shows did you do? I did one theater. Yeah. I was doing Gary Unmarried. I'm like, I'm on a sitcom. Let's do it. I booked it between season one and two, waiting for the pickup. I'm in a hotel room. Season two gets picked up. I'm like, what the fuck am I doing in Spokane? I got a sitcom. So then I go to the theater. It holds like 1,400 people. I sell 680 tickets. The promoter picks me up at the hotel, and I go, how many did we sell? And I just sold out, right? He goes, e- 650, 700, but I papered it a little bit. I yeah. go, as he's backing out of the hotel, looking yeah. over his shoulder, I go, well, I guess I'll never be back. He goes, oh, no. <laughs> But, like, yeah, it was, yeah. but it was great. I was yeah. so happy. Yeah. And he was just honest. So when people go like, hey, you know, I got a theater date coming up, uh, Royal Oak, Michigan. What is it called? Royal Oak? 
the Royal Oak Ballroom, the Royal Oak Theater in Michigan, in Detroit, Michigan. And people go, well, how often do you come to Detroit? I'm like, I'll know Sunday because Saturday, if that shit ain't sold out, they're not going to have me back because people lose their fucking shirts when you don't sell. It's not a comedy club with a bar. It's a theater. You walk in. They got to make the money at the door. Yeah. So come see me. Does that depress you? Very. And, it, it, and but it's it, not you personally, though. No, you know it's that. not. And it's not depression more as I get confused because some guys sell. And it's not jealousy even because I wouldn't trade my life with anybody ever living or dead. Some guys sell out theaters on theater tours and they've never even been on television. Yeah. And like Brian Regan, one of my all-time favorite comics, you can't get a ticket to a Brian Regan 2,000-seat theater show. And I'm sweating out like an 11, 1,200-seat theater. Uh, Gaffigan's another guy. All theaters all the time. Yeah, no that the reason why is that this is that a lot of people know you, and I get the same thing, right? That because we do other things, yeah. right? So if somebody's watching you on a sitcom, or if somebody's watching you in a movie, or you're doing like some sort of sports sh- news show or something, FoxSportsRadio.com. Do- yeah, they connect. They they, you know, what I mean, they make that connection with you, right? But they don't necessarily make the connection of stand up. Yeah. My my wife said that too. My my stand up was really weird when I was doing Gary Unmarried, and I couldn't figure out what the fuck was going on because I knew the stuff was fresh, the the material was fresh and new. And she goes, "They're used to watching you in their living room in their underwear, with getting up and getting a beer, pause." Yeah, and like people's like uh, manners went out the fucking window. Now that I'm like doing the radio, and I everyone very well knows I'm doing stand up, and I have like a new. It's my wife wrote my new hour like yeah. easy like. I, she's an insomniac and she'll hand me jokes. Wow. And I'm like, this is crazy. And I can't wait to go on stage because I know it's going to work. You just know something's going to work. Oh, I love that feeling. And so now I'm super jacked up about getting back out on the road. Royal Oaks, Detroit, Michigan. It's going to be a great August show. 17th. Let me ask you this. When you do a new joke though and it doesn't work, how do you feel? I feel like a, uh, like a math problem and I'll just figure that, like Tetris, I'm going to get to play. Hold pieces. on, it's my brother. Steve? Yeah. Put him on speakerphone. Hello? Speakerphone. What? Well, when do you no, pull no, the no. mic away? I'm on a podcast. I'm going to call you back. Hey, what's up, Steve? I'm, Let me I'm, talk to Steve. Hey, Steve, can you talk for a second? Speakerphone. Talk for a second. Hold on. Put him on speakerphone. I will. I will. Hold on. Hold on. Hey, Steve. Federation games are being played on ESPN. What Federation games? What are you talking about? It's the pre FIFA. It's the big deal. Like Brazil is playing Mexico. The next game is Italy versus Japan. Things play Nigeria. It's a big thing. Oh, I, I, what I, I, the fuck are you talking? What are you talking about, about Steve? The Confederations Cup, FIFA Confederations he Cup. No, he's special? at home. He's not drunk. No, no, he's soccer. He's playing talking he about soccer. No, he's not special. Hey, Steve, you're on a podcast with Jay Moore. Do you know Jay Moore, Steve? Why did you put me on the podcast? Because I want to meet you, Steve. Because one of your friends is very disrespectful to Bobby. Oh, okay. <laughs> Daddy no wake up. Daddy don't wake up. How's dad, Steve? How's dad? He's doing good. He's doing good. We went to uh, the doctor this morning and we're trying to get him into physical therapy. Hey, Steve, Bobby said you guys used to get uh, possessed by Indian spirits. Is that true? When you were kids? when you're... Uh, Our house in Poway was haunted for sure. Tell us a story. Uh, what happened? How We were possessed? Yeah, we, yeah I, I, I was possessed and you were possessed by... Um, I love it, Steve. Thanks I love, for calling. I love you, Steve. Later, buddy. I love you. Wow, See? that's incredible. Yeah, Steve sounds like uh, he's, he's thirty-eight. Not, yeah, but he didn't that sound, was a thirty-eight-year-old man. He didn't sound well. What do you mean? What do you mean? What do I mean? The Federation, it's uh, the whole thing. Because we love soccer so much. Whenever it's on but TV, but he couldn't even say the word soccer. You don't think that was weird? No, that I understood what he was saying. He was trying to t- talk about the Confederations Cup. Squarespace, all-in-one platform that makes it easy to create. Bobby, wait. Professional website. If you want a website, Bobby Lee, you got to go to Squarespace. Get a portfolio blog. You know what? You need an online store with pictures of corn on it, and underneath it says Bobby Lee Cron. You can get that with Squarespace. Hosting, analytics, 24-7 support, beautiful templates, easily customized to look exactly the way you want. With responsive design, your website automatically scales to fit perfectly on every device. Every Squarespace template has its own customized mobile view, like Bobby Lee Live, at Bobby Lee Live. You could have a link to your podcast on your Twitter bio. Squarespace could hook that up for you. Online store, sell the merch, $8 a month for the standard plan, $16 for their unlimited plan, $24 unlimited plan, online store. 
sell the corn T-shirts. You could sell like an t- Asian Kennedy. I love it. Oh, yeah. It's not yet. Ich bin ein Berliner. That's a great bit we're going to do coming out. Free trial, squarespace.com. When you're ready to purchase, click enter an offer code under pricing at checkout. Use the offer code J6, J-A-Y-6, for 10% off. J-A-Y and the number 6 for 10% off and a free trial. Or go to fakemustache.com and click on the Squarespace banner on the More Stories page. Squarespace, everything you need to create an exceptional website. Bobby Lee Live is your Twitter handle. You tweet once a day. Yeah. You ever take pictures and your Instagram I do. I photos? Instagram. I have a lot of Instagram. Do you like, are you proud of your photos? You like I them? love them, yeah. I just tapped out of Instagram because I get Why? Because obs- I get obsessed with the followers and people I don't know have like 100,000 followers. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, but I have like 3,000 because I just started and I'm like, I'm taking pictures of my kids and puppies to get people to follow me on Instagram. Just That's follow me good. on Twitter. I'll put the same photo up on Twitter without like the uh, cool effect. No, the, here's the, the Instagram's great because the thing is you don't, you can just look at people's photos and you can t- tell or see what they're doing. When you have only like three sentences, you know I don't know where you're at. I don't know what you. I, especially comedians, they try to say something funny. It's like that's not funny. Really? You should follow me on Twitter. I do follow you at jmore thirty six. I already do follow you. I said okay. the Miss America pageant should have non English speaking judges to make it fair. But I do stuff like this on my nice uh, Instagram. I do stuff like this. I do naked karate in my at hotel rooms whenever I'm on the road. Oh my god, Bobby Lee on Instagram. It just went to Chelsea lately. Yeah, that's not Chelsea. Oh, that is Chelsea. There. Okay. Now I'm gonna. Okay, Bobby Lee live on Instagram. There's a picture of you doing naked karate. What town of oh, Fort Lauderdale? Yeah. Naked kung fu. Yeah. Uh, and look. Oh, it's a fur. Look at all these. You are. Naked beast kung fu trick, but take on Spider Man trousers next time. These people, what's... I did that on my own with my phone as a timer. It that took three hours. What is your? Where is the Instagram? How many uh, followers do you have on Instagram? I like fifteen thousand or something. There's a uh, Wolverine right there, Adam Ray. Yeah, he played Wolverine. I know fifteen thousand followers. Bobby Lee live, but his, and here's his, you and he's Steve. In a, he's in a, in a movie coming out. Look at that photo. These two cutie pies.